Hey, I'm CJ Maurer with The Gist. Welcome back to another one of our strategic HubSpot tutorials. Today, we're gonna to talk about best practices for reporting on sales team performance. Every team in any business needs metrics by which they need to be evaluated on and targets that they need to try to achieve. None more so than a sales team. This is a huge, huge need for anybody using a CRM. So we're gonna show you the best way to do that in HubSpot right now. So right now you can see I have a very simple, very incomplete dashboard pulled up in our demo portal. And what we're gonna talk about right now in this video is one, what reports you wanna have in there, and two, how to build them using both the default reports that come out of the box with HubSpot, as well as the custom report builder. Now, before we get into any of these reports, let's talk about the strategic element of actually building your reports, right? Because not only do you need to know how to build reports, but you also need to figure out what reports you actually need. What data do you need to measure? How do you want to measure it by? And oftentimes the person who's responsible for building out the reports in the CRM is not the person that needs to use those reports on a daily, weekly, or, or monthly basis, right? Can't tell you how many times I, I know that there are CRM admins that basically have to reach out to sales leaders and say, okay, tell me all the reports that you need, right? But sometimes as a good CRM admin, you wanna to start to anticipate those needs because you, know everything that's in the CRM and you know what data is coming through and what could be measured. So one of the things that I recommend is right here, click actions and then add image, text or video. Then you can add a text box. So what I do is what I've done right here is I've created a little text box. You'll delete this once the, the dashboard is done, but put all of the reports that you wanna see on the dashboard right here, right? And then you can check them off as you go, just like a little list in real time, right? So what we've done here is, and we'll come back to this, is break down some of the really common and valuable reports that sales teams wanna to see to measure their performance. Let's go over the reports that are already in this dashboard. And these are some very, very foundational reports for sales teams. So the first is a closed deal overview, right? How many deals have closed? What is the total aggregate revenue that was brought in, right? These are two of the most foundational. And now we're starting to get a little cute with our average deal size. As you can imagine, just by looking at this report, you can go way, way deeper, right? So instead of just saying total revenue broken out by average deal size, we can do total revenue and break it out by source of business or by owner or by deal type or by any one of the many, many variables that you may collect on deal records and or on quotes. Really, one thing to keep in mind is you are either enabled by or constrained by the amount when it comes to what you can report on by the amount of data that you gather in your CRM. So a really quick anecdote, if you go back and see our video on deal pipeline optimization, one of the things that we talked about was requiring any CRM user to enter in information in order to move deals to new stages, such as you can't move a deal to a needs assessment completed stage until you've filled out source of business, deal type, uh, what their pain points are, because now you can use those in reports to break things down, which is very exciting. Deal creation to target, these little gauge reports are, are one of my favorite. So you have basically created 28 deals, and maybe your target is to create 40 within whatever time period this is, so you can see where you're at in relation to the goal. And then here's revenue, right? Saying we've generated a total of $228,000 in revenue, and uh, this is across all pipelines, and our goal is 400,000, so you can see where you are on your way. Let's talk about how to actually create new reports. So you're gonna add reports right here, right? And by the way, First thing you can do is from saved reports, right? So by creating all three of these reports, these are saved. So I can now add these on any other dashboard that I'm building in the future. Good to know. But most of the time when you're building a dashboard, you're gonna be creating new reports, right? So you're gonna go ahead and click this and I'm gonna move over here. By the way, this is, a, uh, this is what this report looks like in the editor, but we'll get to that in a second. So the first thing that I want to call attention to is HubSpot, especially when it comes to sales, 
has a lot of really great default reports that are going to populate with your data automatically. Before we get into creating reports from scratch, like look at all of these reports. It's not showing you much right now, but let's, let's search pipeline and see what comes up. This is a really great like deal funnel report. What we can also do is select data sources. So let's, let's go analyze our deals. So these are all default reports that are going to populate based on data that lives on deals. Deal amount average by rep. This is a great one. I'm going to click this one. I'm going to save this report. You can add your own description or you can have HubSpot generate a description using AI. I'm going to add it to the sales and revenue report. I'm going to click save and add. And now I'm going to click go back to your dashboard. So now I'm going to move this over here. You could stylize it however you want. And now this report is going to go here. All right. But now let's talk about how to actually build your own. There's, there's two ways to do it. Uh, first is the single object builder. So if you click this, this is how reporting was a couple of years ago. It used to be your only option. As the name suggests, it allows you to build reports based on the data in just one object. So let's say we do deals. I'm going to hit next. And then you can choose all of the properties that you may want to report on. So let's do uh, source. And I'm going to go to our custom property here, source. So we're going to use this as a variable. So now let's go to visualization and let's do a column chart and let's display source by the count of deals. And what we want to do is create date is all data. So now we have all deals by source. So we're going to name this all deals created by source. I'm going to go ahead and click save. HubSpot's automatically going to generate a description for me. I can choose if I want to keep it. Personally, I think this is like a little bit too long. So sorry, HubSpot. I'm going to give you a little negative rating there. I wish there was like a, a medium face. Anyways, now I'm going to add it to sales and revenue. I'm going to hit, hit save and add. Now I'm going to go to your dashboard. All deals created by source right here. Nice and simple. Okay, so that's the single object. But let's talk about the custom report builder, which allows you to report on actions across multiple objects. Now, data set, that's a video for a different day. So you're just going to click choose my own sources. Now, when you do this, you can select to pull data from up to five different sources, but you always need to choose a primary. So because we're talking about tails, deals is going to is going to be the primary data source. But perhaps you also want to pull data from companies. And let's keep scrolling down sales. Maybe let's do activities. Um, let's do quotes and let's do line items. You may not, as you can see here, it told me I reached the limit. You may not create every single report just because you pull from all these data sources does not mean you have to create every single report has to pull from multiple data sources. You still could just report on one particular uh, one particular data source. So now that we're right here, let's start with our filters. Let's actually go back to this dashboard and let's look at our report list, right? So we're going to go back here and we're going to figure out uh, what report that we want to generate. So let's do actually let's let's expand on. Let me hit refresh here so we can see our newly created report. Let's do deals created by source instead of deals created. Let's do deals closed. All right. So I'm going to build my filter here. We're working off deals. Let's do pipeline and stage. So now we can only report on deals that have entered that have essentially won. So they're either in the signed paperwork or turned active, right? So now because in this report, this was reporting on all deals, regardless of what stage, maybe they're new or they're working or they're lost, right? So it's good to know where the, the, the common sources for all deals created, but what about the common sources for our closed one deals? So I'm gonna do a, a vertical bar chart again, 
And now what I want to do is I want to measure source on the Y axis, or excuse me, the X axis, and then broke, broken out by count of deals. So give it a second. And now you can see this is very interesting, right? It's fairly similar to our deals created, right? Referral, most of the deals came in through referral, 16. The next closest is five, which is sales prospecting. So then what we're seeing here is, once again, eight close one deals from referral, but the second uh, most common is organic website inquiry. So maybe you're learning from something from this, right? Where like, even though we may get more leads from sales prospecting, the organic website inquiries are more likely to close. So I'm gonna say, instead of this, this report was called all deals created by source. We're gonna say all closed one deals by source. Come on up spot, there we go. I'm gonna save this report. Again, I'm gonna add it to the sales and revenue dashboard and I'm gonna hit save and add. Now I'm gonna to go to your dashboard I'm going to size this up however I want. And now we've basically just doubled the size of this dashboard in just a couple of minutes. So it's really, really easy to HubSpot makes it very easy to build reports and, and populate your dashboards, especially with the, the canned reports that come right out of the box. Now, admittedly, the reporting tool does take a little bit of time to learn. But just like anything, it's time on task, right? Uh, nobody has learned to ride a bike by watching a YouTube video. The only way to learn how to ride a bike is to get on it and trial and error. And with the HubSpot reporting tool, although we're trying to ho hopefully accelerate your understanding of it with this video, the HubSpot reporting tool is no different. The more you play around and build reports, the faster you're gonna learn it, but it is not rocket science. Anybody can learn it. So once you, understand how reporting works in terms of dashboards and where to find can you know out of the box reports and how to use the custom reports builder then it really just comes down to uh, it comes down to strategy right what data do we actually want to report on and how can we build mechanisms to make sure that we're actually giving ourselves a chance to report on that data itself so before I close out this video, let's go back to our deal pipeline. Let's go into a, a closed one deal. This is what I mean by that, right? All of these properties, number of companies, employee count, pay frequencies, current provider, what states they have employees in. Now, because we have systematized it so that no deal can go to a closed one stage without this information being gathered, now we can reliably, reliably report on it. And this is what makes it so effective. So ultimately, get an understanding of the HubSpot report tool, get feedback from sales leaders and other people within your organization to understand what data and metrics are important to report on, and then make sure that you will always reliably be able to report on those things based on what rules you set for when people create records or advance deals and submit deals, that is going to truly transform your ability to analyze your sales team's performance. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit like or subscribe. Honestly, it feeds my ego a little bit, but what it also does is make sure that you can see more of our videos and allows us to reach more people who have the same needs and objectives as you to get the most value out of HubSpot. The other thing, if you would like to get a HubSpot strategy breakdown, just like this in your inbox every single Monday morning, subscribe to the spotlight. The link is in the description. It'll take you four seconds, maybe not, maybe 20 seconds to subscribe and you'll get an amazing breakdown that's gonna help you level up HubSpot in your inbox every single Monday morning. Once again, I'm CJ Maurer from The Gist. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.